Hello, friends. Um, today is Wild Wednesday, and I am so excited because today we're going to learn more about fruit of the Spirit. In particular, we're going to learn about self-control. So, in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, it tells us in chapter 25 that a man with self, without self-control is like a city without walls. What does that even mean? A city without walls? Well, that doesn't make much sense to us today. But in Bible times, you see, cities needed walls. They needed walls to be safe, to be safe from bad things, from people that would want to hurt them. And also a wall was to kind of contain the goodness in the city. So self-control for us is just kind of to put a little kind of invisible wall around what we do, our actions, our decisions on how to move through the world. So I was thinking that since it's about moving, maybe that science and the laws of motion would be a good thing for us to do today. So that's what we're gonna do. And here we go. Um, you know, the main law of motion says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Well, today we are going to test those laws and talk about things that affect them. Because you know what we do affects other people. And sometimes in small ways, sometimes in big ways, sometimes in good ways, and sometimes in very bad ways. So the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna watch me load up some beads. These are just like Mardi Gras beads. Um, they're very long though. So if you have any at your house, what you do is you just put them into a container that just about fits them. Okay, I chose a container that would be just about full of beads when I finished. Okay, it needs to be something with just a little bit of weight, so string or yarn won't work. It needs to be something just a little bit, a little bit heavy, not a lot heavy. All right, now look to see what we're doing. Here we go. What? How did the beads go uphill? That makes no sense. Wait, let's try that again, just to be sure. Things are supposed to go down, not up, right? But I bet you're smart enough to see that because I started it, I started it with that first little tug, everything else that came out was a result of that tug. This reminds me of sometimes when we do just one little thing and it makes a lot more things happen. Here we go. Now, sometimes our actions have great results. Like, let's just say we start um, to gather some people to help and um, improve a situation in our community or in our neighborhood or something. That can have great reactions. That can result in wonderful things. But sometimes if we choose to do a thing that's not so good, it can also have terrible, terrible consequences. So that's where fruit of the spirit and self-control come in, is to help us figure it out. And a lot of this is gonna be trial and error. Science is trial and error. Sometimes these things work better than others. I had to try some different containers today before I found one that I liked that worked really well. So that's another thing. It's about making decisions and failing every now and then so that we can do better next time. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, I think this one might be the favorite thing for me today. What I did was I just took some white rice and I put it in a water bottle, all right? If you have a funnel at your house, that would be great. Um, I don't have a funnel but I just made one out of paper, and that way you can pour the rice in and it won't go all over your kitchen. I had a few accidents, but just make sure you sweep it up before your dog comes in. Okay, so I'm gonna try something that you're gonna probably think, there is no way. I've got rice in a water bottle. Um, you know, it's just right, right there, you can hear it. 
and I'm gonna see if I can just pick it up with a stick. You think, you think that'll work? Nope, won't work. Okay, let me get the phone down a little bit more so you can see what I'm gonna do now. So I take the rice and I bang it down until it's packed. I even bang it down a little here. What I'm trying to do is make the rice be packed more tightly than it was, okay? I'm trying to get all the little air pockets out. Now let's see if it will work. Ooh, almost, not quite. Remember, trial and error. The key is to bang it without shaking it too much because if you shake it up and down, then it's just gonna, oops, that probably didn't help. Okay, now, here we go, let's see. Oh, it's harder to go in. Oh, wow. Check it out. We picked up a water bottle filled with rice with just a stick. This is a stick we use in the kitchen just for poking things. Uh, but you could also use um, a chopstick or a pencil or anything that's just long and thin. Now, the reason this worked is because the air pockets were eliminated. They went away when we banged the rice tighter. And so the, the stick was able to have friction, which pulled it closer to the rice, which picked up the whole bottle. Now, just for fun, I decided to see if it would work in something heavier than a water bottle. So I got this flour vase. Let's pack down the rice really good. I figured since this was heavier, it might not work, but let's see. Wow, this one's hard to get the stick down in. can't get it down anymore. Let's just see if that works. A glass flower vase, y'all. So just so you know, I also tried this blue glass, which is very heavy, did not work. So again, we try, we fail, we keep trying. So what does friction tell us about in our decisions? There's good friction and there's bad friction. Friction is when two surfaces rub together, like rub your hands like it's on a cold day and your hands get warm. That's a good thing, right? But sometimes when our ideas don't go with our friends' ideas, we get friction like that. And that's not a good thing because sometimes we get angry, sometimes we lose friendships over that. Um, so what we need to learn to do is manage the space between us and another person. Sometimes it's good to get closer to another person. Like if a new neighbor moved in next door, there might be friction until you meet the neighbor. And then when you get closer and learn to know them, then things are great. So part of self-control is knowing the difference between good friction and bad friction when it comes to us and other people. Okay, all right, that's it for the rice. Now, the last part of our demonstrations today are gonna involve coins. I know you have a lot of coins at your house. If you have an index card, that'll work great. I did not have an index card, so I just used a piece of cardstock, which I have a lot of. Okay, I'm gonna thump this penny, which is sitting over this container. And it's just gonna, what do you think? You think it's gonna go off with the paper like a flying carpet? Let's see. What? It went right in the vase. Let's try that again. That's pretty cool. Wow. Some things work really well. In this case, the harder I hit it, the better it works. Because if I had just done this, let's see what would happen if I did it slowly. What if I just gently moved it over? No, nope. no, nope. it's just going to go right off. So, again, it's trial and error and knowing when our actions are more likely to work. 
And if we do something, if we try something and it ends badly for us and it, it makes us angry or it makes other people sad or feel left out, then we don't do it anymore. But if it does work, we keep doing it. All right, now, oh, last thing is these are coins again. This time I'm gonna use quarters, whoops. All right, I'm just gonna stack up some quarters here. I hope you can see those. And now I'm gonna use a butter knife. Now this is not a sharp knife. This is just a knife that we use to spread things. And I'm gonna turn it upside down so the straight edge is along the surface of the table. Okay, and I'm gonna hit the quarter with the knife. I'm gonna hit it hard and I'm gonna aim for this stack of quarters. What do you think is gonna happen? Let's see. Oh, I thought the whole stack might fall down, but actually just the bottom one is the one that flew away. Let's try again. Wow. Oops. I would be a terrible hockey player. Here we go. Let's try it with pennies and see if that works. Sometimes our actions don't affect the whole group, but they might affect just one person. And that's something we need to think about. What if you do something, wow. Let's try that again. Oh, I'm better at this than I thought I was. This is fun. You could really do this all day. Here we go. Wow. Okay. So what does that have to do with self-control? So with a group of people that you're in, whether it's your class or your friends in your neighborhood or your family, any kind of community that you live in, um, you try to get along with the whole group. You have to be careful because sometimes, um, your actions or inactions, even if they don't affect the whole group, they could affect just one person and that's also not good. So it's very hard to understand and plan ahead for those kinds of things, but that's what science is and that's kind of what life is. We try and we try and we try again to do things in the way that God would like for us to do them and to live the way that Jesus taught us. So just like in science, we have to think about the sizes of things, the weights of things, is there gravity, is there friction? Um, making decisions on how to act is like that too. We have to think about all kinds of other people and their feelings and their, um, their backgrounds and their experiences and their abilities. And we just have to think about all those things. And I'm not saying that to make it sound scary, um, is to make you think and me think and all of us think before we act. And that's what self-control is all about. All right, friends, it is so good that you can stay connected with us this way. Thank you for joining me this Wild Wednesday and I will see you soon.